How's it going, peeps? Welcome back to Viva La Coin. I am Joe. I will be your host for today's episode. And if you can see, I am wearing my original Hawaiian shirt from our intro video over a month ago, which means one thing. We finally broke 100 subscribers. So thank you so much for kicking out our channel to everyone to stay informed on what's going on in the crypto space. And from the bottom of my heart, I cannot thank you uh, enough. And I hope that all the videos that we put out thus far goes to show that we're not here to show bullshit, you know, 1000x prices for no reason or to tell you the same thing every day. But this channel is about educating you front to back on all the major pillars of cryptocurrency, why things are valuable, what's happening in the news, what's happening in normal centralized finance, and ultimately help you make the best decision so that you aren't buying high, selling low, panicking, um, doing backflips, it doesn't matter. So if that's the case, if we are helping, make sure hit like on the video, keep sharing this content to get it out in front of everyone. And for today's episode, what we're going to actually cover is an update on what is going on with Ethereum. So as I've mentioned in a couple prior videos, Ethereum has had incredibly tough times scaling. And they, although being first to market in the largest network right now, directly behind Bitcoin with the second highest market cap, they have hit a, a plateau, so to speak, where the amount of transactions they can do or the fees that people pay or are just all being congested. People are paying more, the network is moving too slow, and although it is an irreplaceable part of the crypto ecosystem right now, the competitors that are right on its heels, such as Cardano, Binance Coin, Polkadot, they are going to try and seize the opportunity to close the gap between their market cap and Ethereum's. So I'm gonna go over a couple things today as to what's going on, and I'm also, for the new people here, I'm going to link below a previous video that I did on Ethereum and its scaling issues and a new update coming in July known as EIP-1559. And if you don't know what that is or why it's important, make sure after this video, go down in the description, click that link and watch that video as well. And it, it will really clue you in as to what's going on behind the scenes and what Vitalik and his team that are still working on Ethereum intend to do to try and solve some of these problems. So let's just go ahead and jump into the content here. I'm gonna minimize myself. Now, I did finally get a stand for my camera. So if you don't know, I'm using my laptop camera, but I did buy an official camera that I will be getting synced up. We've just been putting out content every day and I haven't had the opportunity to do it. So bear with me and we're still piecing things together. Now, looking at Bitcoin here, we are over $56,000 now. And although there's a little bit of up and down on, on the minute or 15 minute on the hourly charts, we are pushing up from a low earlier, uh, less than a week ago of $50,000 when they were shaking everyone out for the CME futures options closes that I was warning everyone about and also trying to get everyone not to panic. So if this brings you some peace of mind, seeing everything come back up, good, I'm glad. And I, can, I assume, uh, at least with the information that I have and what I'll be covering about Bitcoin specifically, um, we'll, we'll be able to make our best judgment as to how high it will continue to rise over the course of the month of April. But what we're going to look at today is not Bitcoin. It is Ethereum and its competitors and ultimately where they stand. So Ethereum, as they're having their scaling issues, they had this new protocol or this new update that they were going to put out, EIP-1559 in July. And all that would do is it would first start truly burning Ethereum, not just tying it up in protocols, but actually burning it, making Ethereum deflationary, which just means that there would be an even more limited supply as it's burned. And right now there's 115 million circulating, but there's no max supply. So if when you do an Ethereum transaction, you use it to buy something on Uniswap, um, if you use it in the NFT space, well now some of that Ethereum would be burned and it would also make the fees a lot more digestible for the average retail person because Ethereum fees are absolutely brutal. Now they've been a little bit lower recently. Um, I was doing some Uniswap uh, switches earlier this morning. I was paying on average about 35 to $45 
for that, which is down a little bit from last week. I, I had one or two that were up in the mid 100 range, um, but it's still too much for the average person. And in order to combat this, since July is a very long time away when everyone is competing in this parabolic run up in the crypto space, they wanted to try and speed this up by putting in layer two solutions in what's known as rollups or just ways to make the blockchain more efficient uh, into the Ethereum network as soon as this week or in the next week or two. So the irony of the name of the update, Project Optimism, uh, is funny because it was delayed. So not too much optimism to be had in the world of Ethereum at the moment. And when they go and put these updates in, it would have sped the network up and made it more affordable for anyone that wants to utilize that network. And now it's delayed. But when is it delayed until? So let's go ahead and read. Ethereum scaling system Optimism delayed its mainnet launch to July, which is right at the same time as EIP 1559, after the venture-backed startup's promise of a debut in March proved to be, in quotations, over-eager, the project announced Thursday. In a blog post, Optimism, which last month raised $25 million, uh, admitted the original timeline was unworkable and took many projects by surprise. Well, fuck yeah, it took him by surprise. Everyone was like, okay, Ethereum might be a little bit of a dumpster fire right now, and we haven't gained much ground on our Ethereum-based projects, but this new update is coming out, and it's going to give us a much-needed boost. Well, now that was pulled out from everyone, and they have to start thinking of different ways to circumvent this. Many projects have already spoken about jumping to other blockchains and some have left and gone to Binance already. So when we look at the actual Ethereum ecosystem, you're going to have many very hardcore Ethereum fans that say, well, look, look at how many projects are built on Ethereum. Look at how many uh, exchanges utilize them. Look at how many different data and analytics uh, systems track those ERC-20 tokens and their, their use cases. And I get that. But I, I also understand that these are cryptocurrencies. These are tokens. They are not people. I do not have relationships with them. Uh, so if one is underperforming or if one is overperforming, I can enter or exit one of those positions without losing any sleep. There are people that have held projects like, let's say, Ethereum for the last three months, and it hasn't gone anywhere. And people do that same thing for Bitcoin Cash, for Litecoin, because they believe in that project. And that's all well and good. However, I want you to be informed as to what to expect. Now, do I think that Ethereum will continue to rise? My answer is yes. Now, I'm not going to be like one of the thousand other YouTubers that say, oh, it's going to $25,000. No one fucking knows. And I am not a financial advisor. So even if I did know, I couldn't tell you. Um, but I, I'm not going to sit here and mislead anyone and say I know where the price is going to be. But what I do know is that the extension of this timeline is not good. And not only is it not good for Ethereum, it isn't good for the projects on it. Because we look at their largest projects like Aave, love the project. Synthetics, love the project. Uh, Compound, UMA, Bancor. Uh, Oneage, a uh, different decentralized exchange aggregator. They just said, screw it. We're also making ourselves available to the Binance Smart Chain because we cannot scale and do the things we need to do on the Ethereum network right now because most of the people, let's even say for Aave, which is all about borrowing and lending, they, the cost to do everything is so, so much higher on Ethereum than it is on these other blockchains right now. So they need to get their act together and figure something out. And I'm still tracking the amount of Ethereum that is leaving exchanges. And it is still bullish, in my opinion, for Ethereum that the total amount of Ethereum left on the exchanges right now just hit a 28-month all-time low. So that means that many, many people, big institutions, retail investors, um, you name it, they're still buying it. And I still think that if they knock this update out in July and they, they crush it, Ethereum's going to skyrocket. But until then, uh, I think that my money is better off in some other projects. 
Now, I still will always hold a little bit of Ethereum just in case, um, but by no means is it a larger position for me than let's say Cardano. Now, when we look at what the other projects are doing, I showed you this chart back when I was first talking about Ethereum. When we look at DeFi Pulse, now this website just shows the total locked value of all the money that's tied up in the decentralized finance cryptocurrencies and applications on the ERC-20 blockchain, the Ethereum blockchain. And that includes your, your large players, anything in the decentralized ex exchange space, anyone that does payments, assets, all these different cryptocurrencies. Now, right now they're at $40.7 billion in total value locked. Well, let's go ahead and let's look at where it was at, uh, well, about two months ago, close to two months ago. Um, we were still at 41 billion. Um, we, since that point where Ethereum started to top out and get super congested, we have not moved up since that point. And with that announcement that they couldn't scale any further and that update got pushed, they dipped even further. This morning I was looking at this chart and it was up in 41 billion and change and it's back down to 40. But let's flip the script and look at the Binance Smart Chain and what BNB coin and that whole ecosystem is doing. So right now, they're up to 17.8 billion locked. And when I covered that last month as well, they were only at, I think, 9 billion locked. And just when this announcement came out on February 26th, 25th, look at the difference in the amount of locked value that uh, the Binance Smart Chain has compared to Ethereum. Where Ethereum dipped down, Binance Smart Chain jumped from right around 14 billion all the way up to close to 18. So about $3 billion in just a couple days. And I believe this number is going to continue to rise because I use the Binance Smart Chain. I do trade on their different applications, including PancakeSwap, which is essentially the Binance version of Uniswap. And it cost me pennies on the dollar to do that as opposed to Uniswap that would cost me dozens if not hundreds of dollars sometimes to do certain trades. So I think the Binance coin in this ecosystem is going to really, really have a good next couple months. And the next two videos I'm actually gonna put out are going to cover one, the blockchain that actually anchors the Binance Smart Chain and another cryptocurrency I'm a massive fan of, which is Cosmos. I said I was gonna do a separate video on them and that's what's coming up next on the channel. And then the following video, I'm going to go deeper into the Binance Smart Chain, what some of these projects down here below are and how to actually purchase them if it's something you do your own, <clears throat> your own research on and decide that this makes sense to you. Because again, not a financial advisor, so that would be up to you to make the call. Now, what about the other competitors? So Cardano just had that big round table I mentioned on their calendar that was coming up this past Thursday. They announced that their smart contracts, which is all the different decentralized applications that you see in these locked in value charts for Ethereum and Binance um, respectively. Well, everyone gave Cardano shit that isn't a fan of it because they don't have smart contracts. They don't have smart contracts. It is like an echo chamber on crypto Twitter sometimes for the people that don't like it. Well, guess what? They're a Lonzo hard fork, which will allow them to be able to enable smart contracts, was just announced to be coming out in the coming month or two. So in brief, Cardano developers plan to launch a smart contracts focused testnet as soon as the end of April. Ultimately, the Alonzo hard fork will allow users to deploy decentralized applications on Cardano. This is massive, massive news. And some people that were not fans of Cardano speculated that they were never even going to have smart contracts this year. That Cardano is nothing but hype and smoke and mirrors and that's all. Well, now we have a date and so far Charles Hodgkinson and their team behind it have been just rolling everything out right on schedule. And I think that, again, this is the narrative of the tortoise and the hare. They spent three, four years doing what Ethereum is struggling to do after the fact preemptively. And also remember I mentioned in my video yesterday, Cardano is going to be fully decentralized as of March 31st, which is massive news. That means that every block that's created 
the entire network ecosystem will be run by the people all over the world and the companies behind Cardano, IOHK, the whole Cardano team, they're not going to have to do anything. So it's fully decentralized and myself, since I stay Cardano and everyone else in the ecosystem will be the one supporting the blockchain. That's exciting to me to be a part of that. And then finally, people will say, well, Joe, NFTs are all on Ethereum and that's where people are spending all their money because NFTs are the new hottest thing. And if you haven't seen my video breaking down NFTs or those different blockchains, go ahead and go back and take a look at that as well. Um, but for those non-fungible tokens, for those cryptocurrencies, these large chains aren't sleeping. So Polkadot just announced that NFTs are coming as Kusama, which is the test net of Polkadot, deploys Ethereum alternatives. Their competitors are not going to sit there and take a nap because Ethereum isn't ready to roll. They are going to go after the most popular, the hottest items right now and incorporate them into their blockchains. And Polkadot incorporating them into their parachains is no different. So when you're looking at the value of these larger blockchains, oftentimes it's difficult to say, well, I'm looking for something that I can get rich quick on. And looking at the market caps of it, uh, let's say Binance Coin, it's 41 billion. Cardano, it's 38 billion. Polkadot, it's 30 billion. Uh, let me go and buy a bunch of other stuff. Or, hey, Ethereum's been a fan favorite. They're going to pop off anytime now. I don't know. I don't know if that's the case. They may have a little bit more of a stall. And if they do rise, I don't think it's going to be as quickly as if they had those solutions ready. For Binance Coin, Cardano, and Polkadot, they now have an opportunity over the next couple months to really capitalize on pushing towards that number two space in cryptocurrency. And they all have big roadmap items that we're looking at individually, tracking them and showing the value growing day by day. So when it comes time as a newer investor, if you only have Bitcoin and you haven't secured any other altcoin positions and you're thinking about picking one of the larger cryptocurrencies and you think that that's a safe bet and they're going to continue to rise, which they will. Um, I think that all three of those Ethereum competitors are going to have very, very good quarter twos of 2021. Now, as things unfold, or if I get any new information about Ethereum's updates, you guys will be the first ones to know. And like I said, I haven't fully exited my Ethereum position. I've sold a lot of it and I put it into other projects and cryptocurrencies that have done so, so much better as of late. So my return on investment was justified. But if you're getting in for the first time, I would just take all of these things into account and make sure to continue to do your own research and read the news just to see why certain cryptocurrencies are reacting the way that they are. But hopefully this update was beneficial for you. Keep sharing the videos. I, I love you guys. And uh, as always, I will catch you next time on Viva La Coin. And uh, thank you for joining me today.